according to the World Bank, I think this is now common knowledge, according to most of us, that 621 million Africans don't have access to clean energy. 621 million people don't have access to clean energy. Correct. Then the World Bank will still go ahead and tell us 400 million people have access to mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So if people have access to mobile phones, then this is an opportunity for us to leverage the now, you know, the infrastructure which is created by mobile phones to reach them. So what one lamp now we go ahead and do, or what we are doing, we now enable every household which has access to a mobile phone to go ahead and order for a solar light product by SMS. They don't need internet for that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the ordering is done by SMS, and then the payment is done by mobile money. Mobile money has also taken off really well across Africa. Mm -hmm. So payment is also done by mobile money. And then the last mile delivery, which has been the biggest challenge across Africa, of reaching the people who are actually facing the problems is now done using the existing transport infrastructure. Taxi motorcycles. Mm -hmm. If you visit Uganda right now, at least every village has an average of three taxi motorcycles. Every village? Every village. You are talking about what we used to call trading centers. Yeah. I'm actually talking about villages, not trading centers, because a village has a small grocery shop. Right. Then maybe a population of about 5,000 or no, no, a few that homes, That yes. would almost assume, of course, that uh, you do have roads, you know, that yes. uh, provide access. Yes. Do you? Yes, we do have feeder roads. They are not tarmac roads, but they're feeder roads, and even if they are not passable throughout the entire year, at least with the taxi motorcycle, it can be accessed. So someone who makes an order for a solar light system can be reached, either through, you know, uh, a nearby grocery shop mm. or to their doorstep. 